let's get started. We're talking owner mindset and playing the infinite game today. And I, we were just talking about before we started recording, how excited we are about this topic. And, and Brian, I, you know, my name is Nicole Waldeck. I am the chief development officer of Meg Academy. And of course I have Brian J. Gallagher here with me, who is the founder of Meg. <laughs> And one of my favorite people to talk to about this topic. So Since when did I'm, you throw in the J? That's <laughs> that's more, new. Well, sounds more like, you know, higher All up right. on the totem pole. Just, just add the third after it. Why don't you, even though I'm not. Are you a third? Yeah. Is that no, something not, you're not, sharing? With no such thing. <laughs> but you were saying, you're sharing a little bit. I'd like you to share with the rest why this is so exciting. I, I, you know, you, you really brought this to bear. So you deserve all the credit. You know, there's a lot of mechanics in what many, many owners seek out our advice on um, to perfect and, and rightly so. And, and obviously it's why the podcast is called Secrets of Top 10%. It's why we do the Zoom cast once a month. It's why we built all of Meg Academy is to, you know, protect and preserve people from spending time and money and, and, and skin in their knees more times than they need to, to get the the same task done, right? But behind the mechanics of the doing this is this, is everything we're going to talk about today. I mean, this is everything that we've been communicating in parcels and we communicate it in its relevant parcel, which is good because it, it it's plug, play, plug, play. But I think as we go through this Zoomcast and, and hopefully everybody comes in with an open mind, you can just shut out the rest of the day. Don't worry about your schedule. Don't worry about how the day has to wrap up. Be in the moment here for the next 30 to 45 minutes and truly absorb what we're communicating because this is a 30,000 foot view of the beingness that true leadership does take on. And it's truly innovative. I really think what we're touching on here today is the blockchain technology of management, practice management and success and, and leadership, really. And it applies across the board, not just to physical therapy. Yeah, and I think that's so well said. And I also wanna acknowledge that we are coming up here on a year of doing these Zoomcasts. Can you believe that? Oh, I didn't even think about that. So time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> uh, we wanna say that we we really feel honored to to have you guys tune in and listen to what we have to say on now a monthly basis. So um, we really appreciate you um, tuning in today, especially. So. Yeah. We are, Honestly, are we, even beyond, I'll even say even beyond honored. I mean, we know you only have limited time and we know your days are very, very busy and you choose to spend it listening to us and hearing what we have to bring. And, and it's, it's true gratitude for us to have you guys here and, and doing that. And it does justify all the hours and time that we spend researching stuff. So thank you very much. And I know I, I have a lot of fun doing these so. <laughs> and I learn a lot, you know, which, which is what it's all about. And, yeah. um, you know, that kind of transition us nicely to start talking about what do we mean by this infinite mindset. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people were kind of playing on words and saying like, well, I'm still playing that game. It, that's true. It, <laughs> it is something, it's a, it's a long-term game. And I just want to define what is a, a finite versus an infinite mindset. So finite it means there's a beginning, middle, and end. You can think about it as like any, any game that you might play, like a baseball game. It has nine innings. There's going to be a definite winner. There's going to be a definite, you know, loser. So Matthew, if you can put up the, the first slide here, we can show some of the characteristics of the finite player versus the infinite player. And it's not that one's right and one's wrong. I think that you know we all kind of play these finite games within this infinite game that we're playing, this long-term game. Um, but the finite player in general, you know, has a good strategy. They're going to do a lot of preparing and they're going to do a lot of studying and practicing and going through the mechanics so that when they get to the game, they're, it's just a demonstration of what they prepared for. They try and minimize the element of surprise so that they can, you know, really go for that win versus an infinite mindset has an open mind that you're, you're willing to accept anything that you are expecting surprises and not trying to suppress them, but you're just kind of anticipating these surprises so that you can be prepared to, to adapt and change and pivot. You know, I think that pivot was the key word of the last year. I don't know how many times I heard that word like pivot and, uh, you know, change and adapt. Uh, and, and what we had to do during this pandemic, we changed the way that we treated and delivered care and we changed our, you know, front office space and our waiting room so that we can accommodate people and still take care of people without putting them in jeopardy of getting sick. 
So I, I, I really see that this year tested our ability to execute on this infinite game. So Brian, can you give some other like real life PT examples of this yeah. concept in action? Yeah, definitely. And Nicole said something that I thought was very astute and she kind of went through it pretty quick. So if you didn't catch it, um, Nicole, explain what you meant when you said, you know, you know, people can choose to play as a finite game, uh, their physical therapy practice and, and go into business in, in a finite frame of thought. And people can choose to elevate themselves. And if we can keep that slide up, that would be great. Um, as to the infinite game, right? And you said, that's not to say that you're not going to play finite games within the infinite game. Explain that. Right. Well, you want to be prepared for, for what you're about to endeavor. So I think what comes to my brain is the startup. So, right. you know, a lot of startups that we work with, and if we get to them, you know, a year, year and a half into practice, they're like, ah, I went into this. I got all the bumps and bruises. I right. figured it out on my own. I, you know, we came across all these challenges and now here we are, we're stunted with our growth because we didn't establish the right structure and, and you know, help, we, we need help. Um, versus the startups that seek out help that no, they didn't go to PT school to become a CEO and executive and to, to open a, a practice. They went to school to get the clinical skills necessary to be a good therapist. But unfortunately, we don't get the, the CEO and executive training in school. So they seek out the training that, you know, Meg provides or others provide to allow them to develop those skills, develop a game plan, develop a map so that they can, you know, more easily navigate the startup process. Yeah. And if we stop right there, think about it. Like we've been saying on our podcast forever, we've never had a startup fail ever in the history of our company. Going all the way back to 2009, I think was the first startup we actually took under our wings. And it's not because of us. I mean, I won't, I'm not even going to take that credit. What I'm going to say is this. When you're in high school and, you know, Nicole is probably in, you know, cause she's so prepared all the time. It was probably like third grade for her. And she decided I'm going to be a physical therapist. And so she decided to be a physical therapist in third grade, but she didn't, she wasn't going to be effective in fourth grade going out and actually treating people. It wasn't until she spent, you know, six years in PT school and the rest of us did it in four, but she did it in <laughs> six and she spent six years in PT school and became skilled and fully mastered the abilities and skill sets of a therapist to then be a staff therapist and be an effective staff therapist. Well, it's the same thing in startups, right? So many people just say, I'm a good therapist. Let me just open up my practice. And then they struggle versus the clients that we have that come in and get the education and skill sets of how to do a startup practice so that when they go into doing it, there's no re it's not a far stretch to understand why they don't fail. There, it's almost impossible to fail. It's kind of like, you already have the skills to succeed. You already know what's coming before it comes. You already know what to do about it before it's here. So what, what, where are you the effect? I mean, where are you going to be the effect? And unless you just, you know, knowing the technology is step one, using the technology, being able to use the technology step two, and then actually step three is, which is out of our control. Now you actually have to do it. You actually have to apply it. Right. But if we get you started with two of the three, no yeah. wonder we're able to say we've never had a, you know, startup fail. So infinite games within uh, finite games within the infinite games are exactly what Nicole said. It might be, you know what, we're going to take, you know, six months to run through this Gantt chart and get fully up and running so that in the first six months of, of startup private practice, we're at break even. Okay. And here's how we're going to be break even. Well, that's a finite game. The finite game is the scores to get break even within a six months window of time. That's kind of like playing football. The person who has the most points on the board after, you know, two hours of playing football is the winner of the game, you know, when the clock runs out. Right. So, same concept. I can say the same thing about billing. You know, our, our finite game is to get our AR under 15% over 90. Our, to get our AR buckets from 30 to 60, 60 to 90, 90 to 120, you know, dropping by 50% every time you step to the right one step. And that's what people are hitting us for all the time. Brian, what are these standard operating procedures? What are these standard operating metrics? What are these, you know, what are these targeted goals? What are the, those are finite games that we want you to comprehend that you can then gamify with your staff. Because here's the thing, playing the position well for the benefit of your colleagues is what you're trying to do with your staff. You're trying to bring employees in to get them to play the game really well in a manner in which the people around them are benefiting because of them. Yes. And that's it. The role here is that in, inside of any business, you should have your interest on developing the player. 
so that you're unifying your team based on their purpose, not on the issue, not on the issue of beating Medicare or beating the ABCs and ATBs and all the other, you know, franchises down the street or the hospital. That's not your, they're not your enemy. That's not your game. You're never to be playing that game in my book. That, that is just such a detriment to your team because honestly, it's just taking you off course. And, and I think that goes to what you're saying here, trying to win the game before, you know, that's, that's not what this is about. It's trying to improve upon yourself playing the game. Yeah. And, and, and that's I, what Nicole was talking about. I will say, I mean, and just so you know, this is not an original thought. This is a, a podcast I stumbled across uh, with Simon Sinek and uh, James Kars. And um, I, I just find it fascinating because in a finite game, we, we kind of measure by win-loss column. Whereas an infinite game, it's never win loss. It's always ahead or behind. So you, you know, it's not this like, you know, if you, you stumble and fall, it's not like, oh, I have to chalk that up as a loss. It, it's, it, I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to make plans moving forward to get better and to overcome. So I, I really think the long game, it, it needs, you need to have that as part of your arsenal um, if, if you're going to be successful. Yeah. And it's really good, Nicole, that we do, you know, announce that, you know, we study, we read books, we listen to podcasts and we want to bring you, you know, information from those sources because they deserve credit. You know, Simon Sinek has done a wonderful thing, um, you know, with his whole why, uh, you know, motivation, but, but this, you know, I listened to a follow podcast that Nicole spun off, which was by Simon Sinek and Gary Chapman. And then I went and got the infinite game book. And then I started listening to that. So this is just a, a combination of, but now you got to take it and let's make it physical therapy relevant. So in terms of making it physical therapy relevant, if you're going to create this infinite game, you're going to create it through the development of the personal enhancement of your staff. It's not focusing on your staff to develop the functions that they could perform that's in the best interest of my net profit. Yeah. Wrong game. You're playing the wrong game. It's how can I assemble the best and brightest people that I want to play with who also want to play along with the other people to the degree that we are all benefiting from one another as a participant in this game, as a, as a player on this team. Which, think about those things. And I think we can summarize that as company culture, right? If Definitely. you can establish a good, strong company culture where people feel valued, acknowledged, validated, so that they're not feeling used. Right. That's, I mean, that's where it all starts. I feel like profit margin and the numbers, that's a, that's all a, a side effect byproduct. of you establish, right. A byproduct of if you establish a strong company culture. Yeah. So that's really where your focus needs to be. Yep. Um, I, I want to move on to the next slide. Cause it, you, you made this, um, known to me, I guess, the uh, of, as of recently, this hope to make change, the need to make change, and the demand to make change. Can yeah. you expound a little bit more on what you mean by this? Yeah, definitely. Let me explain this, because I think as I've been talking to people recently, they've been like, yeah, man, that's exactly what I'm looking at. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, before I make a, a, a dive into that, I will say people want to know mechanics. You know, they're watching us on Zoomcast. And they're like, well, Brian, what are you actually talking about? What can we do? Well, here's what I'm talking about, and here's what you can do. Uh, I'm just going to spit out a few elements here. Gamification. You ought to be running a game every single month for your patients. You should be running a game every single month for your staff. Every single month, you should be investing in a game for your patients and a game for your staff. Nicole and I have a game that runs every single month between the two of us. It's not much of a game anymore. If I keep winning it. It's a finite game, guys. (laughs) What are you trying to tell you? Uh, she gave me a run for my money this month. Uh, so, and of course I heard about it on every Slack channel there was in the company. Um, recognition, you know, finding ways to recognize people for who they are as people, for their goodness as people. Validation is you're validating b- based on their performance, based on their skill set. Now that could be, you know, you put a game out there for people to get a net promoter score up by whatever percentage, whoever gets it up the highest wins that game. Whoever gets the most testimonials wins that game. Whoever, 
referrals, those referrals, referrals wins that game. Right. And at the front desk, you know, percentage of kept appointments wins that game. Look at all the sub products that lead to the main primary products and play the games on the sub products. I could go on and on for all day, but here's the thing that I think people fail to do and come up short. And I kind of got this from one of the podcasts was the celebration the actual celebration of people doing things right. When was the last time you had a staff meeting and everybody stood up, clapped and cheered and you gave a certificate to somebody for just a kind act that you observed that they did for a coworker or that they did out in the parking lot or that they did somewhere in the community that you heard about? That's the kind of thing where people are like, I will never want to work anywhere else. Yeah. So that sort of thing. Yeah. So Going into this hope to make change, because I wanted to cover that because Nicole talked about it and you guys wanted concrete examples. So there's yeah. your example. One there. little other tip, there should be five compliments to every criticism. Well, yes. that's one of the things that I got yes. out of that is, is if you can catch people doing good things right. and acknowledge them for that. Right. do that. You know, don't hold back compliments. I think all too often we're afraid that we're going to like give out too much, but people really appreciate that. I know I do. I know, you know, Brian, Brian you're like the king of that. I will say, I'm going to compliment you here that you do a great job of really recognizing when people do good works. So I think if you can do that, that internal drive for them to want to do more becomes that much greater. Yeah, definitely true. Definitely true. I'm always looking for the goodness in people and I'm never one to keep it to myself. If I think it, I mean, Matthew, you know, he's sitting behind the scenes. Maybe he'll chime in at the end of this uh, Zoom cast. But, you know, I was texting him the other night because I was on a bike ride because I do that for my fitness and exercise. And I think about the day, I like to do it at the end of the day. And I was thinking about what Matthew has contributed lately. And I was like, man, you know, that dude really like he conjured up that whole thing. And then he developed that next thought. And then that spun it off into another thought. And I'm like, none of this would have even happened without him. Like it was his high level thinking that really got us. And I was like, man, he's been with us for 15 years and I'm finally chasing his ideas. Wow. <laughs> so I called him up and said, Matt, you got me chasing your ideas, man. That was really good. You know? So, and usually, you know, I'm coming up with ideas and he's developing my ideas, but I was chasing after his ideas of thought. And it just was just high level executive thinking. And I just needed him to go to bed knowing that night that I really saw that spotted it. And Matthew, truly appreciated you're it. the so, best. Yeah. yeah was, I will chime in. It's been five years. <laughs> it's not like 15. I was going to correct. Him, it's but I didn't like criticize. 15, him. But it's definitely I haven't given him four other compliments <laughs> yet, so I had to wait for that one. Well, you know, the other thing we got to correct is Nicole's five to one ratio on compliments <laughs> to criticism. But I think Nicole and I are, I think it's up to like 10 to one when it comes to her. So, oh, I, you know, it, yeah. it's hard for me to keep up. It really is. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. well, thanks, Matt. But anyway, hope yeah. to make change, need to hope make to make change. change. So, I think a lot of people, and think about this to yourself. Now, this is about you. I'm asking everybody watching right now, how many times do you sit back and you spot something that has to change and you really hope it to change it? Like, man, I hope this year I can get to change this, or I hope this year I get a better front desk that operates that, or I hope my therapist actually grasps the concept of, you know, exchange and abundance or whatever it is. You know, and you talk about, you know, and you may not use the word hope, but you're thinking about what wants to be, and in your mind, you want it to change, right? You just really want it to change. Well, when you think about it enough and you kind of get, you put it front and center, you start being like, I need to change this. I literally need to change this. And this needs to change. I really can't go 2021, the same thing I did in 2020. I really need to have three income verticals. Brian's been talking about it. It's been all over his podcast for the last two years. That's it. This year, I am going to develop now it's not until you call us or you call somebody or you sit and you develop something and you put a pilot out there that you're literally beating your hands on the table saying it is, I am demanding that this happen now. We are demanding this change. And it's the same thing. Like I, you know, podcasting is awesome and I love my podcast, but Nicole is just an un untapped talent. I'm like, you have to have a show. You have to do the Zoom show. This is her show. She puts it together. She orchestrates it, produces it and puts out the content. And I stress her out by joining in five minutes before yeah. airtime. And <laughs> she has to show me. Yeah. But um, that is like, yeah, I pushed her to do it. There was times where she wanted to pull back and, you know, I've got 13 kids at home. I got to like tend to the farm, you know, between the farm and the kids. I don't have a lot, but I pushed through and here we are a year later, we've got a successful Zoom cast. So that's demanding change. Like I just don't stop. You just are just going to make sure it's going to change. It is, you're going to be a better 51 year old than 50 year old, whatever that is for you. Don't stop your 
change on it. You have to demand the change and make it happen. And I do want to add in there, if you're feeling really comfortable right now with your practice and you're in this like comfort zone, then chances are you're not, you're, you right. have some untapped potential. There's right. something that you can do to push yourself outside that. Because I will tell you, this was not my idea <laughs> because it's, I'm a more behind the scenes kind of gal. So, but by him pushing me to do so, I, I saw what I was capable of. And it, it really does, you know, uh, allow you to execute on those, those gifts that you have and to share with others. So I, I think um, that's a nice self-reflective tool to, to kind of ask yourself and say, hey, you know, am I kind of living in the comfort zone here or is it something I'm, I'm pushing myself outside my comfort zone? Yeah. And just to test yourself, throw a survey out next week, one question survey and ask your staff, do they feel that they're recognized by you in ownership or management for who they are as people and team members, or are they only recognized for what they do? Ask them one simple question. Yes, no. Do you feel that you are recognized on a regular basis for who you are as people and team members, or do you feel you're only recognized for what you do? Yeah. See what they say. Let the chips fall where the chips fall. It's going to give you a good motivation to be like, you know what? I got to change that. I really have to change that. And that's a good point, Brian, because how much time do we spend coaching on like the recruiting and hiring sure. process? I All mean, the time. It, it's, there's so much time, money, you know, attention that needs to be spent on trying to get good people onto your team and you work so hard to onboard them and, you know, invest a lot of time you know, for them to just say, well, I'm not feeling validated enough or acknowledged enough and you move on. And now you have to start that whole process over again. If you do it right from the start and yeah. implement this, you know, approach right from the start, you're not going to have that turnover. It's, you're not going to experience that, you know, people wanting to leave for the shiny, shiny, brighter object. Um, if they feel like they're contributing to a bigger cause. You know, and, and think about this. Think about the basics of it. Now, here, here's something you might want to write down, right? Think about this concept. And I, I got this when I was listening to the book and, and the podcast. I think all of us are chasing this, this, we're chasing this economic value that we call happiness, right? We, we, we're chasing this economic value of happiness. And we, we want to achieve greater levels of happiness through making more money, you know, being more financially solvent, be, having greater net profit. And yet, if I were to ask you, you would tell you would quickly tell me that um, there's no relationship between money and happiness. So what are we doing, right? So think about it. We're all chasing. You know, I I, I really this this statement really stuck with me. If you're all chasing the economic value that equates to happiness, but yet you know in your heart that there's no relationship between money and happiness. I mean, I've met some people. You know have a, a, a annual income of, you know, less than 50,000, less than 40,000 all up. And there's some of the happiest people on the planet. So you, you know, this to be true. So if that's the case, then the focus shouldn't be on the money. The focus should be on the value of the relationships because that's what brings you the happiness, right? Being willing and, to experience those relationships. And unfortunately our society is kind of structured that way. I know. The educational system is structured that way. Like work really hard, study really hard. So you get a good paying job and you know, you become miserable working and, and being in a mill. So who's the responsibility is it then, right? If the school's well, geared and engineered to um, have an educational system that gets you a certificate, a degree, a piece of paper that allows you an opportunity into a doorway of some job so you can make X amount of dollars, then that's all that they're focusing on. All we're doing is robotically and mechanically putting people through their paces with the intent of a piece of paper to get you a paying job. The, the education system schools has done nothing, nothing to help develop this person as a person, as a being. It's the responsibility falls on you. It falls on us. We pick that up. So don't complain about the millennial generation. Don't complain. Don't let me hear about the entitlement or they're all about this or they're all about that or whatever. I believe me, I was in that camp. I was angry too. I was snowflake this and problem that. Believe me, I woke society. I, I could go off for days on complaining about all that. But the fact of the matter is being a bigger person means you're going to take greater accountability and responsibility for those team members and say, you know what? 
I'm going to stop focusing on this post and I'm going to stop focusing on this, doing this so much. I am going to perfect their skill set in that, in that degree, but at the same time, the same amount of energy and effort, I'm going to help develop this person personally so that they're enriched as a human being. So we do human well, and they're very happy to be a part of our group because they're being enriched personally. Yeah. And we talk a lot about investing in yourself as an employer yeah. and that's great. You're investing in yourself. And, you know, we, we talk about like our training, it's not like buying a car and you drive it off the lot and it depreciates in value. You're investing in yourself and it's going to grow, 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 um, you know, throughout the course of the years to come, but you're also, you know, investing in your employees, you're investing in your team and your group, and you're taking care of, you know, your group. And that is your responsibility. So I think, you know, that is an important point that you made, Brian. Yeah. And I think we can make points all day long, but I think people listen to us or or come to us because they want to know like, okay, Brian, all right, Nicole, I hear you. I, I get the message. This is a long, this is a marathon. This isn't a sprint. There's no finish line. It's only a game that you play and you can only focus on playing it better. So people have probably arrived at that conclusion right now. We're talking about an infinite game with the focused attention on how do I play it better next year than I did this year? How do I play it better the year after that? So if you've gotten that concept, then you should be looking at us like, okay, guys, so what do I do? So how do I do it? I got one idea. Yeah. Well, we have created a diagnostic tool. You can start there. Uh, to assess the health of your practice, which Perfect. kind of takes all of these factors in. So Matthew will throw that link up on the screen, but Brian, I'm sure you have more. Well, there's just a multitude of things. It's This is not a <laughs> unilateral attack, right? This is a completely multi-sectional attack that you're going to do. If in fact, you really want to have that company culture, if you want to have that company culture where you can get away, you can manage from a distance, you can, you can invest in your people and you can feel really good about putting your head on your pillow every night. It's because you're investing in the culture. Culture equals value. The value translates to personal growth, personal acknowledgement, personal validation. Woo, my mic fell. Oh, your boom. My boom mic. It's my new boom mic. So if you're going to do it, think about ways, five ways, come up with five mechanical things that you're going to do throughout the year that are going to be something that you're going to routinely do on a regular basis that's going to invest in the acknowledgement and validation of your staff. I already told you games. Mm -hmm. I already told you monthly staff meetings. You should be celebrating some humanity celebrating some human win, celebrating something that's truly admirable, right? In others. So the acknowledgement through celebration in the monthly staff meeting, the um, gamification and letting people be engaged in the practice through winning. And then number three, you know, look, if you want to change somebody's mood, all I got to do is pluck Nicole out of snowy Wisconsin and move (laughs) her down here to sunny Florida. And I don't even have to add any words. Her mood and spirit's going to increase because of the environment. So look at your environment. There's another mechanical choice. Is it time to put new carpet down? Is it time to paint the walls? Is it time to get them a new laptop or new this? Stop stretching the crap out. Stop stretching it. Stop ignoring that the walls are all scarred up and marked up. Make the environment pristine. I know you're like, wow, Brian, that's just, you know, tight money. It's environment. It immediately increases the mood. I went into a clinic recently and you know, we're Nicole, you know, like in the ceiling, you have the suspended ceiling tiles and they're like two by four. Mm-hmm. And then you have the two by four uh, light lens. Mm-hmm. Well, you can go on Amazon and instead of having those squared lenses or the flat QB ones, and you got the fluorescent lights burning your retinas, mm-hmm. you can buy these lenses that have like clouds in them and blue skies and have robins flying and tree branches overhanging and they're all through your ceiling. And I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm in a park. This right. clinic makes me feel like I'm in a park. Don't go with the dark colors and the, 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 the I mean, if you're going to be some sport clinic, you're going to go black and red and you're only going to do athletes. I get it. But if you're going to go, you know, family practice, build a park inside your clinic, use the blues, use the, you know, the earth tones, right? I, I, we have a question from Aaron. I, Aaron, I think this is a great question. Cause I think a lot of people are kind of contending against this. And I know, you know, even our mobile PT practices, but even outside of that. But yeah. he, his question is, any recommendations for culture building for an, an all remote team of therapists and staff? And I, I have one little tip that, you know, we do a lot of training in my academy on. Oh, thank I God, think, Nicole. Don't have heavy lifting here. <laughs> I think 
the 10 minute meeting is huge for that. Yeah, huge. Designating 10 minutes of your day that you as the owner are going to personally invest time in your employees. And you know, it's once a month, you don't have to do it every single week, um, unless you just onboarded someone, then we recommend doing that for the first couple of months. But once a month, you check in with them, you know, how are you doing? How are things going? It's not about the work. It's about them. Whatever it is they want to talk about is fair game. And you're just there to listen and acknowledge and validate. Um, and I think that's a good way to, you know, when you show people you're interested versus just being interesting, you know, they really feel that. And I think that that goes a long way. Yeah, so that's, that's, that, that's good. And then I've got two suggestions. My first suggestion would you be, see, do you guys notice that I give one? Well, I got two. I don't, I don't know what that personality is called, but it's just organic. <laughs> it's just organic. I, I can't stop myself. <laughs> um, my two, what, what, first of all, I, I would always make sure, especially if I have a remote business, I would always make sure that at least every six months I'm surveying my staff as to what's most important to you, you know, send Nicole a questionnaire or, or get her on the phone and say, Nicole, I just want to like, look forward for the next six months. And I just want to know from your position where you are, what would be the most important thing to you to experience or to achieve or to encounter over the next six months? Or what's the most important thing to you to experience, achieve, or encounter over the next calendar year? You know, it's the beginning of 2021, not a bad time to ask that question. Let's, let's let them tell us, let them tell us what's most important to them, what them tell us what they value most. You know, the fact that you're asking shows you care, right? So ask that question. That's my number one. And then my number two is education right? If you want to lift somebody's mood, you move them out of snowy Wisconsin, bring them to sunny Florida, the environment change raises their mood. Another thing that raises people's mood, another thing that gets them to feel brighter and better about themselves is knowledge, is education. The more at cause somebody is in their life or the more capable they are, the better they feel about themselves. So if you have Meg Academy and you have all the certification programs, you should be Look, I, I'm on Duolingo. I've been learning Spanish for the last, well, I know exactly. I've got 204 day streak. I, I want you to give the rest of this Zoom cast in Spanish. Let's see how good it works. Uh, por favor. <laughs> uh, uh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I just want to keep it, keep it right. Okay. All uh, right. So uh, yeah, I'm not that good. Um, <laughs> but in Duolingo, when you're studying Spanish, what's interesting is, <laughs> it has a, a, a scorecard and it ranks you as to where you are with everybody else who was studying that day. And, and the little bird comes on and says, Brian, you're currently eighth in line and there's seven other people ahead of you for their study content today. You can do it. You can get a red ruby if you break into the top five. And I'm like, damn it, if I'm not going to get that red ruby, I'm definitely <laughs> getting that freaking red ruby. And there I am at bed 11 o'clock at night doing the lingo. And my wife's like, are you shutting the phone off? I'm like, I just got to <laughs> I just got to like, can finish this conversation in Spanish. And, and that's a true story. I mean, so use Meg Academy the same way, issue a certificate of completion for every single course done, and then reward them at the end with a 50 cent raise or a uh, dinner gift certificates, or, you know, I don't know, free organic eggs, like Nicole gets in Wisconsin, whatever you do, you know, whatever you want to give away some, you know, the farmer's market kind of thing, but do that, do something fun like that. Gamify their education. No, I think that's a good suggestion. And I, I, it kind of, we, we briefly touched on this because you talked about um, the second podcast uh, already, but um, I, I do want to bring this up again, because I think it's an important point. Um, the, the idea that parenting and leadership are virtually identical. Yeah. What do you think about that thought and how would you apply that to PT private practice? Well, a lot of people heard me say in my lectures that as a parent, as a father, my hat has one product for my children to raise socially well-adjusted children who are winning in life according to them, right? And I've been saying that for over a decade. My job as a dad is to raise socially well-adjusted children who are winning in life according to them. That goes back to my initial statement just a minute ago, have you surveyed your staff? What's yeah. important to them? How can you be a good parent as a good leader in business, literally the same thing. Nicole's a wonderful mom. She's got two wonderful kids and not 13. And she really invests in them. I've seen videos of her out on the ice, freezing her katooties off, watching her kids play hockey and her literally saying, are we done yet? <laughs> no, two more done. And they do their thing. And it's so true, but that's what you do as a parent, right? You invest in your children to get them to reach for the stars, to get them to live 
their life an optimum, whatever it may be for themselves, optimum, whatever, uh, performance in sports, performance in school, performance in work. And you're never going to stop. I mean, my kids are in their 20s. It, that, that feeling never stops. You're always going to be there to invest, to help facilitate, not do for them. Don't get me wrong, not spoil them, mm-hmm. but to facilitate their reach for more. I always say this, if you're not taking on the beingness of being blissfully discontent, then you're like going back to what Nicole said earlier, and she's a genius. If you're comfortable, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable and you feel like you're just sitting on the front porch and sipping that iced tea and there's nothing more you want in life, then you should get out of the game because you're not playing the game now. You're just not playing the game. You're warming the bench and you're now a liability to your own organization. Comfort is never the end result of putting together a team and playing this out, right? So parenting is the same way. I'm never seeking this degree of comfort. I'm seeking blissfully. I'm blissful every moment of my day. I'm happy with what I'm doing, but I always have a little degree of discontent because I I know I am capable of being a better person in this area or being a little bit better communicator here or helping more people there. And how can I better develop that? And where, where can I challenge myself more? And how can I bring people along for the ride of that challenge so I can help develop them? If you're not saying that in your head, that's the actual mechanics. You know, you want walkaways, takeaways, there's your takeaway. Write that down. Think about that and approach every day like that. I mean, literally, that's why my sign off is expect to do well, because I don't get up every day expecting anything less. Right. And I think when you do that, and when you put, you know, allow um, that development of being your employees being who they're intended to be, what you do is you not only impact them, but then now we get the ripple effect they go home because they're satisfied and fulfilled and feel like they're contributing to a bigger cause. They go home and they treat their own children or their own spouse um, with, you know, that joy and that same excitement and, and, and that trickles down, you know, the pipe. So, uh, you know, keeping that in mind that your impact is greater than just your employee, you know, you're, you have a bigger reach. Um, So, you know, treat it so it's not work. And I know they they say, if you find something you love, then it's not really work. You know, and I truly believe that. Like I I come to, I get excited about this stuff and I I love working with all of of you guys and in helping, you know, you to grow your practice and it's truly fulfilling. And that that spills over and it allows me to be a better parent and and wife. You know, it's funny you say that because I, um, I was working out this morning and I was on the mat, uh, just doing some stretches and stuff, you know, and, and my daughter comes in and she's getting on the treadmill and she sees me answering texts and she's like, are you working out or are you working? I'm like, I'm doing both. I'm like, it, it's the one and the same for me, right? I'm answering questions from owners because I get texts in the mornings and emails. And it's truly what you said there, Nicole. It is really, truly the case is when you're really doing it, you don't feel like it's laborious. And, and here's the other thing you said, what, you know, the sin, sin on, you know, what's the sin, the similarities between being a parent and being a leader, right? And, and it is, it is that degree of caring to see the other party do well. It's not the viewpoint of, I have you here and now I want to tap into your functionality to serve my purposes best, right? How can I get this person's abilities to function at a higher level to better serve my purposes? I would never think like that about my kids. So I never think like that with work, right? With, with work. And so, yeah, I, I just think you should keep it light. You should keep it fun, but keep it professional at the same time. Um, and that's my advice there. And we have tons of uh, uh, examples of that. I think we have several in Meg Academy. And of course, we're always available to give you other other ways to do that. I can tell you the parking space of the month isn't going to do it. So you know, I wouldn't go. <laughs> that didn't I work out. Did you try that one already? Uh, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't cut it, you know. <laughs> No, I think that's great. But yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys too. If you have specific ideas, I, I think, you know, one of the things, and maybe we can make this announcement here, Brian, but, um, you know, we have our Meg uh, mastermind group. And what we are going towards is to have a Slack channel where part of being a, a, a part of this Meg community is that you're a part of a group of all these like-minded individuals that are uh, forward thinking. And, and we do like to tap into each other and share with each other. And, you know, if you have ideas, please share with those on our mastermind group. And we are going to be converting over to Slack here um, in the upcoming weeks um, where we'll be able to better organize that information so that, you know, we're, we're all here for each other and kind of in this together. 
Yeah. And, you know, we've gotten lots of feedback here in our, in our Q and a, in the mm -hmm. chat boxes, which is really great. And, and I will say this, um, Nicole, that communication is the universal solvent to all problems. And we've said that a thousand times. That's what I've gotten from some of my studies in the past. Yeah, not something I originated, but I do love the concept of communication as a universal solvent to all problems. And you want to have as few problems as possible. You, you know, problem is when you're confronted with an opposing force that you haven't made a decision on. And as long as you haven't made a decision, you have it. One thing hasn't broken through in one direction or the other. So you have an open problem that exists. So I think what we're doing here with the, with the coaching moving forward to the coaching forum once a month to allow this open dialogue like we're having here, which is just super powerful and we're all learning from each other. And then the Slack channel is broken up per topic. So now you can get Q and A from, from us professionally and from your peers as well on that specific topic. And the funny thing is the question and the answer to that question that happens in the Slack channel is now being benefited by all participants in the Slack channel. So we've just like exponentially blown out our reach, you know? So if you really want to increase your staff's uh, culture, mood, value, increase communication. One thing I know for sure is when my wife isn't talking to me, things aren't going well. <laughs> I've done something wrong. Something's definitely not happening. You know, when she's in chatterbox with me and she's talking to me, things are going well. We're on the same page. She's totally cool with it. It's only when communication drops out, things aren't going well. So if you want to know another, another tool, get an internal communication system, put it inside your practice, use it widely. We use Slack like crazy or constant communication. Now we're going to double down with Slack and a live communication forum. There's not going to be a single med client that's ever going to feel they're out of communication. They're waiting on their coach or they're looking for an answer. Or I emailed this in. You don't have to do that anymore. This is going to be like real time stuff. It's going to be real fun. Yeah, no, I, I think and we're really excited for that transition over and we're always trying to give in abundance, um, yeah. change in abundance with our, our clients. So I think this is going to be a great forum for us to be able to, to do that in. Um, and we have always appreciate your feedback um, on that as well as we transition. Yeah. And thank you so much for listening to us on this, on this zoom cast, but look at the links we've put together. Look at the materials Nicole has assembled. I have to tell you, it is so unbelievably powerful. If you like our message and you like this uptone point of view, and you realize that your net growth, your profitability is a byproduct of your personal engagement, you are going to succeed. I mean, we have 50 some employees and uh, we have a, we have a good fun. Uh, doing the monthly staff meeting and um, touching each and every one of them on a weekly basis. Um, obviously, Nicole and I have a good time. I have a lot of fun with Matthew as well. We we just, if it's not if it's not that, and we're not playing playing and, and having fun with the best of intents, then it's too solid. It's just too solid. If you feel it's too solid, you got to demand a change. You got to make a change. And Brian, you, I was joking before, but you are the epitome of playing the infinite game. I always have to like be on my toes, like, oh my <laughs> <laughs> but you never fail me. You always show up and you always yeah. know my heart. So, well, you know, a little insight, Nicole. So strap in and get your, get your seatbelt on. Um, we're rolling into colleges and universities this year, and we're releasing our book this year. So those are our two big infinite game next stops. Mm -hmm. We are rolling out the book and we are going to be taking a presence in PT schools across this country because it's great that we pick them up when they get out of school, but why are we just taking a, a fifth or a third of these people who find us? What about everybody else who's getting in there and just struggling? And then they like, how many times have we heard? Oh my gosh, I wish I found you five years ago. I've just been like, so my, and yeah. it's just not right. You know, it's, they're just not fulfilling. You know, I can tell you chiropractors come out of school and they have a much greater uh, footing on how to start their business uh, because 99% of them go into private practice. So it has yeah. to be done, it has to be done better. Absolutely. And do, I know Matthew put up a couple more links. Um, we do have our resource guide that we uh, just recently updated. And so there's a lot of great information in there. So please take advantage of that. Um, and as always, please feel free to reach out if there's any other questions, but thank you for taking the time to with us today to talk about this infinite game and the owner mindset. Uh, we hope you got a lot out of it. I know I had a good time. Um, Brian, if there's anything else for you to wrap up, please feel just, free. Just I can't encourage you enough to watch those um, resources that we've just provided and, and watch the podcast, maybe get the infinite game book that I recommended from Simon Sinek. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, you know, power is in knowledge, right? And, and just, just don't, you know, mark yourself off, 
be committed to mark yourself off. So you have study time every day. My study time is six to eight, right after dinner, right before, when everybody's lolling around after they ate. I'm not missing anything. By the time they get to the couch, it's eight o'clock. I'm ready. So do what you can, you know, commit yourself to learning. And, um, you know, for those of you who are not clients, I'm going to highly encourage you to visit our website, do the video demo. It's a 12 minute demo. It's all Nicole, very fun. She's going to show you all about Meg Academy. And then we're going to give you three chapters. There's one where you can get an inside look, the yellow button right below that one. Click on it, cost you nothing. Get in there and check it out. If you think it's for you, you think we have something of value to offer you by all means, we'd love you to join our membership. We are just majorly focused on building a community that's so rich that nobody wants to leave our community. So that's what you're going to feel here at Meg Academy moving forward is everything is directed at building the value within the community. And that's the parting message I want to leave. That's my commitment. That's my promise to you guys. Good job, Brian. Now we got to get that book done. Let's go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I marked off a week and a half in April. All right, that's good. it. All right. Thank All right, you, everybody. Take Thank care. you, everyone.